What is up players, it's Warboss Tay up in this mug, teaching you how to paint a Wood Elf Glade Rider Part 2. If you've already seen my Wood Elf Glade Rider Part 1, then uh, we are picking up right after the shades have dried. And uh, if you have not seen it, then uh, why don't you go check it out? And this is where we're actually going to end up today. The horsey has gotten a lighter shade of white color painted on. We've highlighted all of the dark leathers and um, everything has gotten a little bit of a touch up. The gemstones have been painted purple and glossed and everything is ready. So here is the final product and it's ready for the tabletop. I also added a little bit of flock on the base, but that is of course up to your discretion whether or not you decide to base your model. So at the end of the first video, we're looking at our model here, and um, the horse is still painted in Celestra Gray, and the uh, shades have just dried, so the first color that we're going to uh, begin painting on our model at this stage is Dumbo Brown. And this is going to be used as an edge highlight on all of the dark Rhinox hide leather pieces. So I'm really going to be careful about just using the tip of my brush and really just outlining the shape as, as closely as I can of the pieces that I'm painting. Now if you think while you're painting on these edge highlighting sections that the paint is a little too thick or it's, um, it's covering too much of the surface of whatever you're painting and it's not looking like an edge highlight maybe more looking like it's a second color like a layer color right on top of that dark rhinox hide then all you have to do is go back to your rhinox hide and paint in the center and push out to the edges when you do that you're going to um, widen the surface area and, and really push that Dumbo Brown so it looks more like an edge highlight and less like a uh, secondary color that you're just layering on top. So all of the dark brown bits were the shoulder pads, the gauntlets, the uh, boots, the knee pads, the leg covering, lower leg coverings and um, the horsey armor and the straps on the horse's neck. Uh, what we're not painting this highlight color on are the arrows. The arrows which were painted in Rhinox Hide, we're just going to leave that. Or if you want to go uh, a step further, you could highlight up the arrows with Steel Legion Drap. Dumbo Brown is a beautiful reddish brown color and uh, it highlights really nicely to show kind of like a, a rich and warm brown leather and it is uh, gonna look really good it's gonna pop really nicely off of that white horse coloring that we're gonna be giving it in just a second so you can see I'm kind of sticking to the edges as much as possible and uh, you don't have to paint straight lines like you can see me doing. I'm painting a series of small brush strokes when I can't really find the angle. And I'm uh, just trying to trace as much as I can, but uh, those short brush strokes is uh, just my way of covering the entire shape. So, uh, very, very it's very much up to you how you want to paint this edge highlighting. A good friend of mine, Joe, taught me when I was still living in Hawaii that the best way to edge highlight, say if you're doing power armor on a space marine, is to put the paint, instead of on the very tip of the brush, actually put the paint on the along the entire length of your bristles and then use the side, the flat of your bristles to drag along the hard edges of the space marine armor and uh, i find that works for space marines but for something like this wood elf which is has a lot of angles and is more organic and there's there's no really hard 
edges to any of the uh, any of the pieces, I, I think that having the freedom of uh, picking out those shapes with the paint on the tip of your brush is really the best way to go. Alright, now that that is done, I'm gonna paint on some Rackarth Flesh next. Remember, Rackarth Flesh was the first color we painted onto the spear. And to get a nice aged bone or ivory color, we used Seraphim Sepia as our wash. So when we're painting on this Rackarth Flesh highlight, we're going to really be uh, just lightly feathering it on and uh, not trying not to completely obscure the Seraphim Sepia, but just feathering on in a series of brush strokes so that you can kind of see that it's uh, very uneven and it uh, looks more organic, looks more dynamic, and makes the spear look more interesting. And also picking out that the uh, amulets on the back of our Glade Rider here were also painted on in Rackarth Flesh. After that Abaddon Black is dried, I just went and touched up the edges of the amulets there. I'm going to be using this Royal Purple from Vallejo and also Serious Purple from Games Workshop. And... You can use either, but what I found was that the royal purple makes a nicer uh, first color. And then the serious purple, if you want, you can use it to build up. But royal purple is a terrific base color for this amethyst because it's a little bit brighter than Nagaroth Knight. Nagaroth Knight is a dark purple that Games Workshop offers. And uh, although it does do a job of making a, a good dark base color, I wanted the first color on the amethyst amulets here to be just a little bit brighter and uh, that's what that royal purple is then i'm going in with gene stealer purple next and when, whenever you paint amulets the trick is to paint like a crescent that starts at the upper right and swoops down to the lower right and then across to the lower left you leave that black abaddon black color in the upper left and um that's the first color you paint on. So what I'm going to do now with my Gene Stealer Purple is I'm going to trace, a, do the same motion, that crescent shape, but I'm going to be making it even smaller and tighter. And as long as you have that little bit of uh, black paint in the upper left-hand corner and uh, at the edges where the purple uh, kind of creates like an island in the center, so you have like a little black outline, and that's going to be a really, really big help. White gray is Vallejo's color that uh, I think is a really terrific white substitute. If you want to go with pure white, then uh, that's fine too. Or um, or you can go with white gray. I, I think white gray is a fine color. It's, it looks just like white to me. And um, it's a little bit more, I think... It has a little bit more of a utility to it. You can use it as a highlight color or mix it in with other colors. Basically what I'm doing is I'm putting that white gray on the tip of my brush and I'm painting tiny little dots in the upper left hand corner. Right in the middle of that black paint, you put a little white dot and uh, that really helps to uh, create the illusion of a reflection. If your white dot proves to be a little bit too big if you've put a little too much of that white gray paint on your paintbrush and uh, it makes a giant white spot rather than a tiny little white dot. All you have to do is go back with your royal purple and uh, tighten up that color so that the white area decreases and that purple area increases. Letting that dry, we're going to focus now on the greens a little bit. We're going to go to Warpstone Glow. 
and even though I've already painted uh, much of the the greens on our Glade Rider here, I do want to paint the little mask that is uh, his face covering, and uh, this is a, a step that of course you can skip if your wood elf does not have this kind of uh, hood mouth covering on his hood. I'm basically going to be copying the color scheme that I used for the rest of the green cloth, which is Warpstone Glow and then Moot Green. We're going to be using Ivory as our highlight color for the horse. And uh, Vallejo's Ivory is a fantastic color. It has a little bit of that eggshell off-white uh, kind of yellowish tint. Not really yellowish, just more of a beige tint to it. So it's it's not just, you know, white. But I, I thought it would be a great layer color to go on top of the Celestial Gray. And uh, I was right. I apologize for the camera. It's going to be going in and out of focus. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's a problem because this was filmed. I think this is the first tutorial I filmed in my new apartment. The lady boss and I had moved to this new apartment, and uh, I shot this in, in clips every time I could spare a couple of minutes to, to work on it with all the other commissions that I'm working on, and uh, I think I'm still trying to just get into the groove of it. So, hey, thanks for watching and uh, really for commenting and for all of the positive feedback. I really, really appreciate it, you guys. So as you can see, I'm following the musculature of the horse, and uh, for all the big muscle areas like the legs, the, uh, all the different limbs, the um, big wide muscular areas, I'm trying to keep my brush strokes as smooth as possible. And it's about here that I realized that my, my lighting and the light settings on my camera are a little uh, too bright. So I actually try to adjust it just a, a tad. And the result is that it, it, now it looks a little bit too dark, but you can see the uh, the ivory paint a little bit better and what I'm doing with it. So uh, it'll get a little bit brighter at the end, but for now, I'm just kind of showing you how I'm working on the horse. And uh, you're going to be... This is why having a cork handle or something to, to put your model on is a, is a huge help because it will allow you to turn the model so that you're not really adjusting your paintbrush hand, the way that you paint and the direction of your brush strokes shouldn't vary too much. Like, as you can see, I, I really uh, prefer to do these vertical brush strokes. It, it helps my mind to see the, uh, the top to bottom of what I'm painting. So moving my model in my left hand really helps me to like follow the legs and I uh, get at the the belly and the chest and uh, the underside of the horse. And yeah, just moving it around is, uh, being able to move it ar around is a big help. Now with ivory and with most Vallejo paints, you really need to thin your paint down. And uh, the white sheet that I'm painting on is actually a parchment sheet and um, it's uh, uh, or it's called palette paper and you can get it from any art store and it, it covers my painting desk really nicely and it makes sure that I don't get any paint stains on my desk and I can use the palette paper almost like a wet palette by putting my paint directly onto it. You might see in some other videos I have some paint stains on the palette paper itself because I'm using that and then when you're done with it you just roll it up and throw it away and uh, you rip out another sheet from the pad. It's, re it's really great if you have uh, not tried it, I'd suggest going out and getting some. Painting the head of the horse is a little bit tricky because uh, you want to thin down that really thick ivory paint so that you're not, uh, you know, obscuring all the details. But at the same time, you don't want the paint to be so thin that you have to do, you know, seven layers of paint. My tutorials are really geared for the painter who wants to get his or her models up on the table in as quickly a time as possible, but have it be a uh, at a good high tabletop standard. 
So uh, when you're painting, you want to make sure you thin your paints just a bit. You don't want to paint directly out of the bottle, as they say, but at the same time, you uh, don't want to thin it down so much unless you're going for more of a glaze or if, if you really do want to build those seven layers and keep going over and over and just show the very steady, uh, gradual shift in color. But uh, for me, one once and done is, is pretty good. And uh, if you want to go back a second time or add a glaze or a wash or a shade and then go back over that, then that's also something that I, I enjoy doing. And I apologize, the horse <laughs> thing's not even in frame. So uh, I am I can talk to, through what I'm doing because I remember what I was working on. The uh, Really, I think I was just focusing on the ears and the legs, and I was so focused on the model, I wasn't looking at the viewfinder for my camera. Or I surely would have seen what I'm screwing up, and I think that's why I cut this video at this point. So when we come back to the model, I had let the model dry overnight and uh, change the, the, the light settings again on the camera just to see a little bit more of what I'm doing and uh, the gemstones have had some time to dry so we're going to take Vallejo's gloss varnish. You can also use Art Coat. I've used Art Coat from Games Workshop before or any gloss varnish. The main idea is that we're going to be painting this on the gemstones and when this dries not only is it going to have like a, a good clear protective coating on our gemstones but it's going to make them sparkle really nicely if you're planning on spray varnishing your models which i am to uh, seal the colors and protect them from any wear and tear then you can just add the varnish on again afterwards the reason why i did it now was to show you at which point that i would normally put the varnish on to create that uh, artificial shine on those gemstones. Now when I'm painting the Carrack stone, this is just a highlight for all of the horse's hair. So starting with the tail, I'm uh, just really following the lines of the mold, or the uh, sculpt rather. The sculpt of the horse's tail shows me where all of the individual strands are. And so I'm really just focusing when I'm looking at the model on uh, painting the edges and the parts that I think the sun or uh, the light would catch the most on. One of the really cool things about the Glade Rider sculpt is that the horse has uh, some braided sections to the tail. So I really thought it would be fun if I uh, take advantage of that sculpt and apply some of that highlight right on top of the braid, just kind of dragging the paintbrush down the, the center of it. And on the other side, I just kind of want to go a little bit faster and show an alternate technique. It's more of a dry brush, so using the flat side of the brush and not the front, I'm just kind of tracing all of the lines and, and uh, just laying that paint onto the raised sections of the hair. And here I'm doing it again on the main, just taking that Carrick Stone, wiping off most of it so that uh, you don't have too much paint on your paintbrush and just uh, kind of brushing it along the hair so that it picks up on the raised details. The last thing I'm going to be showing you is uh, the Abaddon Black we're going to be painting this onto the eyes of the horse, as well as I think this is where I realized I missed painting the gemstone on the spear tip in Amethyst, and that's why I'm uh, going to get started doing that. So I'm going to be doing the same thing I did with the other gemstones, layering up that purple color, but uh, also the last thing is I'm going to be painting the horse's eyes. These horses are going to have very uh, big, beautiful black eyes, and so it's very simple. Just put a little bit of that Abaddon black on the tip of your paintbrush, and brace your wrist against uh, the uh, the handle or the cork handle, or your other wrist, and very easily just drag that black paint across the eyeball of the horses. We're helped a lot because the sculpts of these horses is really nice, and uh, you can see the eyes very clearly. It's not hard to reach at all. 
So there I'm showing you that I painted on the gemstones just exactly as I painted on the amethysts hanging from the cloak. And here's the model. I had a lot of fun painting it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. And uh, you can check all the information in the description box if you'd like to support the studio. Or if you're interested in uh, getting in contact with me, of course you can also reach me via just leaving a comment here on this video. Oops, dropped it. Thanks so much for watching you guys. I hope you have a great day and I hope you're painting something fun and I hope my videos help to motivate and inspire you on your journey as a painter. You have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.